Hello everybody, I'm Melissa. I am here at Dick's Fresh Vintage, our workroom where we upcycle and create all kinds of fun things and I'm here to do the video that I promised you guys. So to start out, this is the traditional stencil. I hope you can see it. I use this to layer colors in different words. Uh, so I started it, but still got a ways to go. This one is the one we're going to be working on today. This is PVPP. I've already put the vinyl on. I want the wood to show through. So I went ahead and I used the um, Vintiques Clear Gel Sealer. It's a paint sealer. And I used it to seal my vinyl so I don't get bleed through when I go to put my paint on. So to get started, what you want to do is you want to paint your board a base color. Any color that you want your woods to show through is the color you're going to put down. And I do tape the back so that I have a nice clean edge and get all my edges as well. Once you've done that and it's dried, and it doesn't take long for this paint to dry at all, you want to go ahead and take your vinyl, which I've already cut on my Cricut Explore, and we're going to go ahead and put this on the board. get all that vinyl. I do usually use a squeegee, but since I don't have one here, I'm using this. And I have already marked my board so I know right where to lay it to make it easier. So I'm just going to go ahead and lay this down. Make sure I'm on all my little marks. And we're going to push that down really well. And then we're going to take a credit card or a hard squeegee, which is what I like to use. And we're going to rub. We're going to get all that vinyl to stick to that wood. Once you've done that, go ahead and peel your transfer tape up. It does help to use a little wiggle motion back and forth. Hope you guys can see this. Oh. In one. All right, and if you're really good, you can save your tape for another project. Just lay it back on, and there you go. You're good to go. So once you've done that, you want to dry brush your vinyl to prevent bleed through from your second color. So go ahead and take your base color. I'm using. Um, well, it was called something else. I'll have to get back with you on that one. And we're just going to take a little bit of paint. Pretty dry and we're gonna go ahead and just smush it over all that vinyl feel free to really work it in kind of go at different angles just make sure your brush strokes are going in one direction the same direction as the grain of wood when you're done and you want to do a real thin coat and this will dry super fast I can't say enough wonderful things about this paint Okay, so now that I got that all dry brushed, I'm going to go ahead and set this aside because I've got lots more boards to work off of. And I keep a jar of water sitting close by to throw my brushes in. Sorry, I keep popping out of frame. I've got stuff everywhere. Story of my life. Okay, so once that's done and that's dry, I've got this beautiful board here. I already got it base coated. I've got the dry brush on and I'm going to go ahead and take this pretty gray color. And I do use the best chalk brushes, which um, are through uh, Heirloom Traditions. You can get them on the link that um, Tanya's posted. And you just want to do a nice liberal coat. I like to start in the middle so that I can let it my brush run out of paint as I hit the edges to give it a distressed look. So hopefully you guys can see this as it's going on. You just kind of want to smear it on. You can leave some of that under color showing through if you like the distressed look. If you don't, go ahead and paint it solid. And I'm just using old table leaves that were abandoned at our consignment store, our other location. And they were just piling up and I thought, oh, we'll make some signs out of it. So. Here we go. So as you can see, I've left some of that color showing underneath. 
I'm just going to smooth it out. We're going to get those edges really good. Make sure we don't have any drips because that just doesn't look very good. Okay. Now that that's done, I'm going to move this aside. And once that has dried, what you want to do is peel your vinyl. So I've already started this one. As we can see, I did try to pick colors that would be easy to see because I'm filming on my cell phone and a selfie stick. So go ahead and peel your vinyl. I like to use the weeder. I've, um, I'm using tweezers today because it's what I have here. But I do tend to bite into the wood a little more and have to go back and touch stuff up. Feel the vinyl, that easy. Once you're finished with that, if you wanna do any distressing or anything like that, go ahead and take your sandpaper. I do use a hand sander for a lot of this stuff, but just to get in some of the areas. Just go ahead and rough it up around your edges. As much or as little as you want. I want a lot of this blue to show through, so. I'm just kind of going at it. Tack cloth is good for this because you get dirty hands. I'm just going to use a damp paper towel. Not too wet because you can wet distress this paint. And that means just taking a wet cloth or a baby wipe, and when it's dry to the touch, you can just rub back to the color underneath. Whoops. So now that I got that done, I'm going to go ahead and seal it. There's two ways that you can seal this. The first way is a liquid sealer, which would be our Ventiques gel or the Aqua Clear matte. This does come in satin or gloss, but I like the matte for the signs. The other way is the clear wax, and I'll show you a little bit how to do that on another sign, probably another day. But um, for now, we're just going to use the mat because it's the easy way to do it. Oh, I need a brush. Hold on. Okay. So we're going to stir that up really good. Sure there's no clumps on the bottom. This paint does dry to a lighter color and it'll look dry, porous, and chalky, but once you start sealing it, all the colors will pop back to its true intended color. And hopefully you can pick that up on the camera as I'm doing it. You do want to use very thin coats of this and two if you need to, but you don't want to let it pool or drip because it can yellow a little bit. And as you can see, this just goes very quickly. I should say you never want to dip out of your container. You can pick up paint deposits and deposit it into your color and tint it. So when you go to do the next piece, it'll pretty much color it that way. But this is almost empty, so I'm just going at it this way. So did you all have a good Christmas? I sure did. It was my first year with a grandbaby. Boy, that's fun stuff, I'll tell you. Go ahead and get your edges. Make sure there's no drips. It's pretty easy here at the workroom. We have everything we need to do this and much more. We do custom painting demos and paint classes as well. And then at home I have a giant ping pong table that's my work table. I cut all my vinyl on it and then I move all that stuff and then I start painting signs. So there you go. Hopefully you can see 
how pretty it is. It says, you are my greatest adventure. And I'm thinking about putting this over my grandson's crib. Uh, once that is dry, I will go ahead and attach picture hangers on the back and it is good to go. So I hope you guys found this helpful. Let me know if there's any other questions you have or if there's any other videos that you'd like me to do for you. Um, I am also a retailer of the air, well, my mother, I work for my mother and she's also a retailer for this paint so I can answer a lot of paint questions and all that good stuff. So hope this helped and you guys have a great day. Bye.